Sir Roger at Charles by Edison. I am always very well placed with a country Sunday and think if keeping holy the seventh day were only a human institution, it would be the best method that could have been thought of for the polishing and civilizing of mankind. It is certain the country people would soon degenerate into a kind of savages and barbarians where there not such frequent returns of a stated time in which the whole village meet together with their best faces and in their cleanliness habits to converse with one another upon indifferent subjects here their duties explained to them and joined together in adoration of the supreme being sunday clears away the rust of the whole week not only as it refreshes in their minds the notions of religion but as it puts both the sexes upon appearing in their most agreeable forms and exerting all such qualities as are apt to give them a figure in the eye of the village. A country fellow distinguishes himself as much in the churchyard as a citizen does upon the chance. The whole parish politics being generally discussed in the place either after sermon or before the bell rings. My friend Sir Roger being a good churchman has beautified the inside of his church with several texts of his own choosing. He has likewise given a handsome pulpit cloth and rallied in the communion table at his own expense. He has often told me that at his coming to his estate, he found his parishioners very irregular and that in order to make them kneel and join in the response, he gave every one of them a hazak and a common prayer book and at the same time employed an itinerant singing master who goes about the country for that purpose to instruct them rightly in the tunes of the puzzles upon which they now very much value themselves and indeed out do most of the country churches that I have ever heard. As Sir Roger is landlord to the whole congregation, he keeps them in very good order and will suffer nobody to sleep in it beside himself. For if by chance he has been surprised into a short nap at sermon upon recovering out of it, he stands up and looks about him. And if he sees anybody else nodding, either walks them himself or sends him servant to them. Several other of the old knights' particularities break out upon these occasions. Sometimes he will be lengthening out a verse in the singing puzzles half a minute after the rest of the congregation have done with it. Sometimes when he is placed with the matter of his devotion, he pronounces Amin three or four times to the same prayer and sometimes stands up when everybody else is upon their knees to count the congregation or see if any of his tenants are missing.
I was yesterday very much surprised to hear my old friend in the midst of the service calling out to one John Matthews to mind what he was about and not disturb the congregation. This John Matthews, it seems, is remarkable for being an idle fellow and at the time was kicking his heels for his diversion. This authority of the night thou exerted in that old manner, which accompanies him in all circumstances of life, has a very good effect upon the parish, who are not polished enough to see anything ridiculous in his behavior. Besides that, the general good sense and earthiness of his character make his friends observe these little singularities as foils that rather set off than blames his good qualities. As soon as the sermon is finished, nobody presumes to still till Sir Roger is gone out of the church. The knight walks down from his set in the cancel between a double row of his tenants that stand bowing to him on his side and every now and then he inquires how such an one's wife or mother or son or father do whom he does not see at church, which is understood as a sacred reprimand to the person that is absent. The chaplain has often told me that upon a capacing day when Sir Roger has been placed with a boy that answer well, he has ordered a Bible to be given him next day for his encouragement and sometimes accompanies it with a plate of bacon to his mother. Sir Roger has likewise added five pounds a year to the clerk place and that he may encourage the young fellows to make themselves perfect in the church service, has promised upon the death of the present incumbent who is very old to bestow it according to merit. The fair understanding between Sir Roger and his chaplain and their mutual concerns in doing good is the more remarkable because the very next village is famous for the difference and contentions that race between the person and the squire who live in a perpetual state of war. The person is always at the square and the square to be revenged on the person never comes to church. The square has made all his tenants atheists and teeth stellars while the person instructs them every Sunday in the dignity of his order and insinuates to them almost in every sermon that he is better man that his pattern. In short matters are come to such an extremity that the square has not said his prayers either in public or private this half year and that the person threatens him if he does not mend his manners to prayer for him in the face of the whole congregation. Fuels of this nature thou too frequent in the country are very fatal to the ordinary people who are so used to be dazzled with riches that they pay as much difference to the understanding of a man of an estate as of a man of learning and are very hardly brought to regard any truth how important so ever it may be that is present to them 
when they know there are several men of 500 a year who do not believe it. <laughs>